In this video, I decided to challenge myself with painting by painting from dark to light and not using things like speed paints and contrast paints right from the start. So I'll walk you through some of the things that went really well and that I enjoy doing, and some of the things that I made big mistakes on that hopefully you could maybe learn from in the future. So for this video, I've been using this miniature by Aoife and Alchemist, which is a really cool print. And it massively inspired me to do this because it's quite a large print, so it's bigger than like your standard scale stuff which means there's a lot more detail that I could get on there and I wanted to try and do it some justice. Now they sent this over to me along with another print that's going to be part of an upcoming Kickstarter campaign as well. I have that linked in the description. Worthwhile checking out because in the other print she's riding this massive like lion mount which looks really awesome. So to kick this off I primed it all black and normally at this stage I go in with like a white ink and I go for Zenithal Prime but I wanted to challenge myself and do something different because I rely massively on contrast paints and army paints, speed paints all the time. But after doing some Space Marines where I was just doing a lot of dry brushing from black, I wanted to do something similar with a different type of model to see what sort of results I could get. So I got it all primed and then I headed over to the painting station. And first up, I was gonna do like a dry brush all over it. And I started off with this really dark, deep green. And the dry brushing worked amazingly well on things like Space Marines. And it kind of worked on this as well because there's so many other little bits there that I was catching, it wasn't the best. So I basically went back in with that same dark green popped it onto my wet palette and just started working it up from there. Once that was done, I moved up between different shades. So for each of these colors, I grabbed like three different ones, starting from like the darkest to a mid-tone to a light, and I just worked up from there. So then I started applying the mid-tones onto it, and then went back in with a few highlights as well. I was already starting to like the results of this and just seeing that contrast really showing up and it made the armor really start to pop, which I was really enjoying. And then I moved onto the cloak. And for this, I did stick with the dry brush method. So I started off with this brown and I got that into the recesses. And normally I would just start off with red because I'm trying to get a red cloak, but I figured I would try to get in all those shadows first. So I popped all the brown into like the shadowy areas, dry brushed that in there. And then I went back in with Mephiston Red and I started dry brushing over the top of that. And straight away, you could start to see those blends coming through. It's really starting to give this really nice transition between the dark through to the light. And then I went back in with a brighter red and dry brushed that onto all like the top and high areas. At this stage, there was a really nice transition between that dark through to the light, and it really blended quite nicely with dry brushing. And I know a lot of people can sometimes hate on dry brushing, but for some applications, it can come out really nicely. I did the exact same with her scabbard as well, because I was quite liking the color, and I wanted to try and get some symmetry in the model. So she's so got all the red on one side of the cloak, and I want to get the red on the other side of it as well. So that way it's all balanced and looking nice. And I was you know, trying to use my head for where I was putting the colors for once in my life. For the hair, I did something very similar to what I'd already done with the cloak, and I went in there with that dark brown to start off with, and then I started layering up. But for this, I didn't do dry brushing, I used my wet palette again, and I just thinned down my paint and slowly built up those layers. So I started off with brown, then I started applying some orange on there, and then I moved on to like a really bright white. And I did the same when I went back in with the cloak as well and just did some of those touch-up areas, is using bright white all over the model. Following on from the hair, I also did the same with the rest of the model as well. So I went back in on the cloak and I used some really bright reds and then I used some bright whites over the top and started doing like the edges and everything else. With the cloak, I was really experimenting with this because it's just something, it was a big area and it was not as though I could just put some edge highlights on it. So I was doing these all like scratches and poking and absolutely destroying my brush in the process. But I quite liked the way it was giving it this like worn leather or fabric look all over it. So just kind of poking it and scratching it and just building up those layers of white highlight and it started to look really nice. With the armor, I went back in there as well and I started picking out some of the areas on like the tops of like the ridges of her knees, on the top of this like lion shoulder guard that she's got on there as well. I picked out with the absolute brightest green that I had, added some white into it and then for the top areas, I added some pure white onto it as well. Now, once I had all of my white highlights on there, obviously it was looking a little bit like it all just stood out a bit much. And the reason for this is because I go back in there with Army Paint Speed Paint, or I'll use something like a contrast paint, and I'll choose the color that closely matches like the base color or the mid color that I've used on the model or whatever color I want to be the brightest. I'll really thin it down with Speed Paint Medium and use it like a glaze. So for the hair, I use this orange Speed Paint. So it's like a one part Speed Paint to two part Speed Paint Medium popped it on the hair and what this does is it glazes over the top of it and tints it so those pure whites are now this really nice bright orange and it blends it in with those bottom layers. Same with the armor as well, so I used a green contrast paint for this and I thinned it down again so it was like one part contrast paint to two part speed paint medium, sloshed it over the top of the armor and that way it retains those really bright edges and it really gets into the recesses as well and adds a lot more shadow and a lot more contrast and I just like the way this starts to look. 
I didn't do that with the cloak because I was really happy with the way the cloak was looking, so I left that where it was. And then for this scabbard, I wanted to try something a little bit more brave than I was used to, and I wanted to go for this non-metallic gold. And I went with brown to start off with, and then I laid up to like a brighter yellow, and then I went for like a really bright yellow, and there's some really bright whites in there as well. And at this stage, you can probably tell this isn't working. And I don't know if it's just it was too small of a surface area for me to start working with, or if I was just getting it completely wrong. And what I was trying to go for was having that really bright and dark contrast between them, so putting like the darkest next to the lightest, but I was just picking my areas really, really badly. So straight away, I learned that this is something I need more practice on, and hopefully I will do in the future, but it was a mistake that I made there. I went back over it with this silver, and actually it kind of gave it this nice golden silver, so I guess a win, but I, yeah, that's definitely not a win. And then I did the same for the sword as well. I was gonna go for non-metallic metal, but after the absolute fail I had on the scabbard, I, I absolutely noped out of that. So I just used a gold and silver on the sword as well. For the face, normally I would just go for like a cream and then I will throw on a speed paint, but I wanted to actually try building it up again like I'd done on the rest of the model. So I started off with a nice brown base and then I built it up with some flesh tones as well from my All City Style paint set. Once I'd got those flesh tones in there, I went back in with some white and started to really brighten up some of those areas that I wanted to stand out in the model and then thin down some Crusader skin by Army Painter Speed Paint with the Speed Paint Medium, sloshed that over and that just got back in there, helped bring down some of those really bright highlights and gave quite a nice look at this stage. It could definitely do with a little bit more work, bringing out maybe the tops of the cheeks, maybe the forehead as well and the tip of the nose, but I quite liked the way that was looking. And then because she's quite a big model, I needed to do the eyes. And normally with eyes, I'm doing some kind of like mythical creature or it's like a space marine, so you can get away with like dotting some white in there and then glazing in some really bright color so it's got some bright glowy eyes. But she's a human and she probably wouldn't look great with glowy eyes. So I decided I would be brave again. I was kind of feeling nervous at this stage because I tried to do my non-metallic metal and failed. But I went back in there with this white and I got it in and the eyes were looking okay straight away. And I almost left it there because I wish you can just have bright white eyes and you don't need to see the rest of it. But I said, no, she's too big. You need to be able to see some color. So I dotted some blue and it turned out okay. It's not the best. She does look a little bit cross-eyed, but somebody mentioned that she could just be really staring intently at her sword, and that's where I'm getting away with it, so that's my excuse for this. The eyes do look just about like they're looking in the right direction, but kind of not at the same time, and I don't think they stand out enough for my liking. In hindsight, what I would do for the eyes is I would put the blue in first, and then I would go back in with the white and try to dot it on either side of the blue. The reason for this is the blue is obviously a darker color than the white, so if you go slightly wrong, it's then gonna be going over the white and you'd have to go back in and correct it. Whereas it's probably easier to build up, or at least in my head, it would be easier to build up the white on either side of the blue and gradually build it into place. So that's probably something I would do in the future. So for the blue, all I did is I put in a cream base and then went back in with some speed paint blue and just left it there. I was feeling lazy at that stage and it looked nice enough and it didn't really need too much detail. And then I moved on to the base. So I used this basing mix that I've got. I waited for that to dry and then sloshed on some speed paint medium and then went back in with a dry brush of yellow. And the great thing about doing the dry brush of yellow over this, obviously it makes it look really sandy, but you can then start to catch like the bottom of her armor, for example. So I went in around like the feet uh, around her shins and everything else and on the bottom of the cloak and it gives you this nice like dusty texture that just goes onto the model and at that stage I called her done and I really like the way this turned out and I've got to say pushing myself out of my painting boundary has helped to teach me a lot of different things so working on something that's a bit bigger than all like the minis I'm used to working with made me paint differently it made me think about where I was putting the colors it made me actually try to put the eyes in there for example tried to get some symmetry in terms of the colors because they've really stood out. But it also really made me think about my highlights as well. So like when I was doing the cloak and I was like dabbing in all these different scratches and white highlights, for example, or putting the highlights in the hair, because it's such a big area, you've got to be kind of careful about where you're putting them because otherwise they're gonna really stand out like a sore thumb. So this sort of painting exercise really helped me to think about highlights and where light was coming from and where color should be. And it's definitely gonna help me when I go back to painting just my standard miniatures as well. So it's been a really fun exercise. So thanks so much to Aoife and Alchemist for supporting this and sending over this mini for me to actually paint up. Had a lot of fun with it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as well. If you've got any tips, especially for non-metallic metals, throw them my way because I am awful. I've watched a few videos on it and I just, I never quite get it. So I probably need to work on something like armor, for example. 
are not too bad with like magical colors like the green armor on this i think reads as some kind of metal to the naked eye but whenever i do silvers or golds and i don't know if it's because that's a color i'm just used to actually seeing in metal in real life they just didn't look right to me so i hope you've enjoyed that video not a full painting guide, but just an idea of some of the things that I tried and some of the ways that it can work without relying on just speed paints and contrast paints, because that's literally been my go-to for the past two years. So thanks for watching. Make sure you head on over to the Kickstarter link that's in the description below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.